Hello, I wanted to do a quick video on exporting stuff out of Quill, getting it into cinema, and getting it rendered. Uh, I had to troubleshoot a little bit to figure out how to get all that information over, so I just wanted to do some quick tips on what I found to work for me. So first off, I painted a little uh, demo scene here that has uh, some variations in values because that's very important when you're bringing your color information over. So I have something that's kind of like pure white and then I have some uh, darker values and then it's just kind of like a, a really simple setup. So now that I'm in Quill, I'm going to go to my document tab and I'm going to go to export and I'm going to go ahead and export this as an FBX. I've named it here stump creature and it's going to go into a subfolder stump creature. I'm going to hit export and then I'm also going to do an Alembic as well. And then now that I've done that, let's jump into cinema and take a look at what we exported. Okay, we're in cinema, so let's go to file merge. And I, exp I navigated to where I'm exported to and now I have my FBX and Alembic. Let's go ahead and grab the FBX and start with that. So you wanna make sure that vertex colors is checked and we're gonna hit okay. So now it comes in, but it's really small. So I'm gonna just go ahead and scale this up by 100. And then I noticed that in my FBX, there's a duplicate. So I'm just gonna delete that. Uh, so inside of Quill, I drew on different layers for the different elements. Uh, so they came across, which is really cool as different objects. So now what's really important though, is this tag on the end, this vertex color tag has all of the information that we wanna access. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the shader. I'm gonna go to the texture tag. I'm gonna to go to effects and vertex map. Click on vertex map and just drag in this tag into the vertex map. And now, oh, these have different shaders. So I'm gonna select all of those and drag this into the material tag here to replace them. So now they're all using that same shader that we just made. And there you go. Your color information is now translating from quill into cinema. And if I hit render, you can see all of that information has come across and it looks pretty cool. So that is uh, an FBX. Uh, one thing I will say is, you know, I do have things separate because I like to control, you know, have things that have certain brighter values. So like say these like little lightning strokes that I drew around him, you know, sometimes I'll make a second shader, you know, and add this specifically to that object. And then maybe you could copy this vertex map and paste it into the luminance. And if you do mix mode, add, then you can kind of have a slider for controlling how bright those elements get. So I like to do that, um, you know, especially like when I'm in Redshift. So we'll look at that in Redshift as well, but this is just a standard render. So now let's bring in that Alembic and let's look at that as well. So I'm gonna hide this, merge the Alembic, hit okay. It comes in great. Same thing, there is a duplicate for some reason. So I'm gonna get rid of the duplicate which is just this and then so these came in but they don't have a shader so we can just drag our shader that we made to this object or all of them and look at that it works the exact same except for you might notice that if I go into here and look at the vertex map on the FBX it was called vertex color now, if I drag in this Alembic one, you'll see that it's called RGBA. So you just need to make sure that when you do create your new shaders that they are using uh, the tag is updated and appropriate for the geometry that you're working with. Same thing if I hit render here, now our Alembic works. What's great about Alembic is uh, I usually bring in the animations, like if this was an animation, that's how I usually bring in my files and it works great. So. Now let's take a look at this in Redshift. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this Alembic since we have it set up. And we're gonna switch scenes. Well, you know what? Let's just do it in this scene. Same scene. Why make a new scene? So we have it set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete my shader. I'm gonna make a new shader. Redshift, materials, just your default material. And I'm gonna apply it to each of the objects. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch to Redshift now. And then I have a preset to switch for shading. And I'm gonna hit uh, preview so we can see an IPR of this and we have it working, right? So first things, let's open up our, 
our shader is over here. So let's just type in vertex. We can bring in a vertex attribute, connect this to the diffuse, and then we need to make sure that you drag in the vertex uh, tag into the attribute. And there you go. It immediately updates and works. So one trick to this though is that, um, like let's say you had a, a light in your scene. I'm gonna rotate this and move it above. So it's looking pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to turn off the uh, reflection because I you don't really need that or just make it really low. Um, and then let's go ahead and turn down our light because our light is super bright. So let's say that's our lighting scene. So great. So back to that luminance thought about you know this uh, these glowing lines. So I'm gonna make a second shader. I'm just gonna call this O2. Make make a third one and apply that again to just the uh, glow. Double click that and then now what I would like to do is create a uh, color layer. And what I would like to do is, you know, what's interesting about Quill is that everything comes in a stroke. So I like to keep a little bit of that quality. And what I noticed is if you directly apply this to the overall emission color, and then you uh, bump up the emission weight to like one, you know, it's a, it's a nice quality but you kind of lose. So I am, since I created a second shader, I'm applying to just the uh, glow. If I had used that shader on everything, you would see that you, it does give everything like a, a hotter presence, but I feel like you lose some of that initial stroke look. So what I like to do is bring in an AO, bring your vertex attribute as the base, your AO is layer one and um, set that to multiply. And then you have a little bit of control over what that emission color is looking like. So now you can see that there is more definition uh, where there are AO is like, you know, the closer the contact. So then what's nice is that you have a little bit more control over that and you could like control your spread. So you can make that, you know, wider tighter and you can kind of have a definition over where that emission value is actually happening and i think that that creates a more interesting look it really depends on what you're going for and how stylized you want it to look versus kind of integrating it into a real world scene uh hopefully that is helpful um if there is any questions please feel free to ask um yeah last thing i will show you the perk about it's like a bonus real quick so our scene is really dark and you can see that that glow if i lower that light even more what's nice is that uh glow just really stands out you can really increase that and have it actually affect your kind of scene which is nice if you have variance in that color you know, instead of it being kind of like all pure white, it really begins to influence your scene color wise and it looks really nice. So that's it. Hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.